Welcome to Force a Point Tutorials. I'm Coach from Force a Point, and today our friend Emma will show you the top 10 most used Microsoft Excel formulas. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we've got sum, count, average, summer, count if, average if, VLOOKUP, concatenate, maximum and minimum, and conditional formatting. So the first thing that I want to show you quickly is where I've got this completed question mark in cell C2. Down here, I could quite easily write yes, no, or, you know, down here I could write yes or no. But instead, if I actually highlight these cells here, go to this text format at the top here, I can change that to something called Marlette. So if you type in M-A-R-L-E-T-T -E like this, it means that if you use lowercase a or lowercase r, you can either put a tick like this or a cross with an r like that. So that can be quite useful if you're creating a form that's say completed by or done by. So it's just a quick way of doing that. So we're going to start off with sum. So if I just create a few numbers over here in cell F. Now if I go to formulas here and go to insert function, this here is going to give me a list of functions that I have recently used. So if we go to sum that's just here, what sum does is it just adds up everything in the cells that you selected above. So you can see there it's going from cell 3 to cell F6 and if I want to change that I could just highlight that. So if I just wanted it to be cells 3 to cell 5 I can do or all the way down to cell F6. So if I just click OK here that will then give me the total of all of those added together. Now another way that you can do that is if you actually select these here. You see this down at the bottom you've got a sum and you've also got a count and an average. So if you don't want to use sum, count or average individually you can see that down at the bottom there. So we're just going to format this here. So if we go back to the home tab in the ribbon and then we select this borders function here. So if I go down to top and double bottom border that there gives me top and bottom border. If I highlight all of these here and select in number, comma style, that'll give me the accounting format for those numbers. So if I just delete cell F7 where this formula is and go to the top here where we've got auto sum, that will automatically sum up all of the cells above that it recognizes the number. So again, you can see here that it's selecting F3 to F6. If we're happy here, all we need to do is click enter on our keyboard and we've got 1,300 there as well. Now I've mentioned this before today, but I'm going to do it again for you. So if I just delete cell F7, if you use your keyboard, there's a shortcut. So if you do alt and equals there, that will give me the sum of all of those above. And you can actually individually amend this by selecting the very right hand corner or left hand corner of this selection here or this range. You can amend that to how you wish. So if we press enter again, we get the 1,300. So that's sum. So let's just put an A next to sum here and move down to count. So if I just delete cell F7 here, go to formulas in the ribbon box, go to insert function and go to count. So this counts the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. So it's similar to the sum. So similar to the sum function, I can change the value here. So I can change the range that it's looking at if I want to. And it'll tell me in this box which of those numbers are being selected. So if I just click OK or I can just press enter on my keyboard, that tells me that there are four cells above that contain numbers. If I change this slightly to A, that now tells me there are three cells with numbers in. So you can see how that works there. So if I just undo that by using the back button at the top here in the ribbon, that there gives me my 100 again. There's another way you can do this. If you remember formulas, if you type in equals and then count, Excel will actually give you a list of the available formulas for you there. So all you need to do with this one is do equals count, open brackets, select the range, so the cells that you want to be included in the count, and then close brackets and press enter. And that'll do the exact same thing for you there. So let's put a tick next to count. So average, again, is going to give you the average. So if I do insert function, average. So this gives you the average of those cells. So again, it's selecting F3 to F6, click OK, that gives me 325. If I select these here, you can see that the average is 325. 
And again, a very easy way of putting this in yourself is to go equals average, open brackets, select the cells, close brackets, enter, and that gives you the 325. Let's put an A next to average. So sum if is a way of summing up values based on a certain criteria. So if I wanted, for instance, Excel to sum up only numbers that are less than 100, then I can do that with this formula. So go to insert a function. Now, this is in my recent box here, but if you didn't have that already there, if you go to all and then type in sum if here, click go, you can select it there. So the criteria is that I want to sum items less than, let's do 200. The range is the cells that I want Excel to look at, and the sum is those cells. So there, so that's telling me that of those items above, there's a hundred pounds worth of items that are less than 200. Now I can change this up here in the function bar. So if I want it to sum everything more than 200, I just change the sign over as shown there. So now it's only summing up the 500, 300 and 400, so you get a 1200. So if you wanted to do this yourself, what you can do is type in equals sum if, open brackets, your range is the cells that you want Excel to look at, put a little comma, then we need to do these, these speech signs. So you can do that by clicking on shift and the number two on your keyboard. So that's saying this is the criteria. So if I want again to only sum up things that are more than 200, I just need to do the arrow sign to point right. So a good way of remembering which way that sign goes is always remember that the parent points to the child. So if I want to show that I'm looking for a number more than 200, then I would show the sign as being to the right. Whereas if I want to show a number less than 200, 200 will be the parent and the other number will be the child. So 200 will point left towards the smaller number. So that's a good way of remembering. So we need to do another open speech bracket, do a little comma and then sum the range. And then all we need to do is close brackets and that should give us the 1200 again. So let's move on. So let's now use count if. So this is similar to sum if, so it will count the number of cells given a certain criteria. So if I give the criteria saying, okay, more than 100 and give it a range and press enter or click okay, that's given me one because there's only one number out of all of these cells that are over 500, which is that there. I can change this up here by saying, Okay, count those that are less than 400. And it gives me two, because that and that are less than 400. So let's put an, a tick next to count if. So let's delete F7. So average if, if we do go back to formulas, go to insert function, and then find average if, gives you an average of the cells specified by giving condition or criteria. So again, if I select this range here and my criteria is that I want it to give me an average of everything that is less than 1000, so everything above is less than 1000, let's give it an average range of those cells as well. Click OK. Then this gives me 325. Now if I select this and go down here, you can see that the average is 325. What it's doing is it's summing this 1300 which as we know is the sum of these four here and it's dividing that by the four cells so if i go equals 1300 divided by four that gives us 325. so if i want to do this myself all i need to do is equals average if open brackets select the range do a comma use shift two to create an open speech bracket and then less than 1000, do another speech bracket, a little comma, and the sum range, and then close brackets, and that gives you 325. And using this home bit here, you can then format this again using the number format in there. So let's put a tick against average if. The next one, VLOOKUP, is a little bit different to all of this. It's a little bit more complicated. So first of all, what VLOOKUP means is it means vertical lookup. So if I change this here, 
to number. So if I change column E to number and call this box Teddy colour and table. If I was building up a table down here and I wanted it to return the number of tables I shown up here, what I need to do is go formulas, insert function, go to all, type in the lockup, go and then click OK. So here my lookup value is table. My table array is cells E3 down to F6. And with a VLOOKUP, you need to have the lookup value that's been the first column. So it's going to search in that first column for that lookup value. And then the column index number is going to be the column where the totals are. So in this case, it's going to be two because we've got columns E and F and two holds the values. So we're putting a two there. And down here in the range lookup, we're going to put false because that will return that exact figure. If you put true, it will find the nearest match. So if I click OK, that returns 400 for me there. So we could do this another way again. So if I copied this information here and pop that over here instead, and I changed this column to have a space in between. So we've got column J, K and L. We do the same thing again. Insert the lookup, lookup table. And then the table array here is J to L. So J3 to L6. Now the index number is three because we've got J, K and L and the numbers are in L. So we put three, we put false and that'll pick up the 400. So if you're doing this from scratch, again, all you need to do is do equals the lookup, open brackets, tell it what you want it to look up. So you want it to look up table here, do a comma, select the range of cells, making sure that where you've got the text here, that's your first column. Do another comma, we want column two, and then we want it to bring back that exact figure and that gives you 400. So that's the lookup. Next we've got concatenate. So again, if I go to formulas, insert function, select all and then type in concatenate. We can select it here. So this will just join up several different strings of text. So if I select E3 and also select E4, click OK. That brings those two together like that. So there's another way. If I wanted a space in between here, then I can actually go insert concatenate box in text E2. If I actually just use my shift and two to create two brackets and put a space in between these two text brackets and then the third one select Teddy, that'll then give me a space. So another way that you can do that without actually using concatenate is if you just do equals and select E3 and then use the and sign, which is shift and seven, and then do an open text bracket with shift two space and then shift two again, and then use the and sign again, and then click on cell E4. That'll give you that exact same result. So you can either use concatenate or you can just use the equals and. Most of the time I just use equals and because it's a lot easier. So that's concatenate. Next we've got maximum and minimum. So again, insert function, go to all, type in max, click go. So this will then give me the largest number out of these cells in F3 to F6. If I click OK, that gives me 500 because this 500 is the maximum number. And if I did that the other way, so if I typed in min and used all, click go, that'll give me the minimum number out of all these cells here. So that's giving me 100. That is the minimum or the smallest number. 
So that's maximum and minimum done. Now, conditional formatting is completely different to all of those that you've just seen. And what you can do is you can format text based on a specific criteria. So if I go to home and select the text that I want to format, click on this conditional format here, and you've got a range of different rules that you can create. So if I just wanted to highlight cells based on text, all I need to do is select text that contains. And if I type in color, that will default and give me a light red fill with dark red text. But I can change this to custom if I want to. I'm just going to keep yellow on, click OK. And I can do the same thing with numbers. So if I select everything, column F, go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, so anything greater than, let's say, 400, then that'll highlight everything over 400. Click OK. Now you can remove this at any time by selecting the cells that are conditional formatted, and then go down to clear rule, clear rules from selected cells, or you can do it from the entire sheet if you want to. And that is conditional formatting. If you find this video useful, please like, share and tell us what you would like to see in the comments. And if you are new to our channel, please subscribe so you can be the first to get notified every time we upload new content. For any inquiries, please visit our website www.forzapoint.com. Connect with us on all social media at Forzapoint. Have a wonderful time and bye for now.